before. Now I will take all the great engagement from all of these previous sessions into some more interactive approach. So I'm not going to uh, present anything to you. You should try to present something to me. So the only thing that I will try is initially at least, okay, to start uh, to help you, you know, to engage a little bit more to today's topic. So that's why I ask you, and if you will open your chat, you will see that uh, I would like you to go to uh, slido.com that we are going to use it as a tool to uh, interact today, but at the same time, I will also share my screen with the thing that you should see when you will visit also Slido. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, excellent. If you will go to Slido and you will put in the hash real RRI, you should manage okay to see the screen that uh, you can see while I'm sharing my screen, okay. And uh, you will see there that the only thing that I did is to start with a general theme. And I'm saying that uh, you see it as three questions, but it's not really three questions, okay, it's only one. The problem with Slido, it's not really a problem, okay. Uh, there is a limitation of the characters that you can use. That's why I split this in three different uh, questions. So although the RRI keys from all of the discussion that we had today seem to be the right amalgam to achieve responsible research and innovation, and it is promising at the same time huge potential in offering many benefits towards achieving societal challenges, now we go to the question of today. In reality, do we see actual results and structural and organizational change? We've heard many things, but the thing that I would like to see now is your own opinion on this topic. And I want you to share all of the experiences that you have. Now, we will not have only this question. You will, excuse me, okay, because I have to juggle between several windows. I will start with the first question and you can use Slido after that in order to write not questions really, okay, your comments, ideas, things you would like to raise. And then I want you to start taking the floor and uh, offer your views orally. So. We are starting with the first one, okay. Trying to be provocative and a little bit pessimistic probably also. Which are the barriers to implementing RRI, appro RRI approaches? What is the thing in your experience that you uh, saw it as a barrier? Criticism probably also in implementing RRI appro uh, approaches and in order to be able to see that you manage also to go to Slido and boost a little bit your interactive experience, okay, I prepared something. We won't do another poll. So I'm activating a poll for you where I went through the literature mainly and I manage, you know, to collect some of the uh, barriers, okay, identified and the criticism that exists in implementing RRI approaches. And I will ask you to please go to this poll and choose three that you believe are the most important. I can go through them and discuss them a little bit in order to help you. But before I will do that, please, someone open the microphone and tell me that you manage with Slido or write in the, in the chat if you are facing any kind of problems. I'm already in Slido. Um, 
I had some issues at the beginning, but if we write in our web browser the URL, um, we can enter easily. Yeah, if you will see, okay, it's slido.com, I have it in the chat. And then you have to put real RRI in the hashtag. Yes, we can access it. Okay, good. So I may start by uh, repeating, okay, what I said that we are focusing initially in the barriers. I saw that some people already, you start, you know, uh, putting uh, your ideas in the poll. Uh, and um, I give you options there. As I've told you from things that I found in the literature, uh, the RRI concept under contract development. So a lot of confusion still, okay. Uh, there are different views and understandings of RRI and this creates a kind of a problem. Um, the Western Eurocentrism, okay. It was one of the big criticisms of this RRI concept. Uh, so little chance to buy in at the, at the global level. Uh, no clear division of labor in the sphere of responsibility in the innovation activity. So there was no clear indication of what is actually expected and at what stage from uh, innovating uh, businesses. Uh, the fourth one, tension between excellence and responsibility, both in science and uh, business. Treating all activities related to RRI as an additional burden that uh, makes innovation more costly and time consuming. A fifth one is ins insistence in, on transparency and open access. So corporate strategies of intellectual, of intellectual property management not aligned with the open access paradigm. The sixth shortage of understandable and easy to use tools to measure responsible innovation in business. And the rest, I believe that they are really self explaining okay, some people, they say it's a very bureaucratic process and they don't like that, especially in the innovation part. Uh, political barriers, institutional barriers, social barriers. There is some criticism, is it needed? Is there a proven advantage of RRI? And the resistance to change. So I see that slowly you're becoming very active in the poll and that's good. I will give you one or two minutes more to put the view, your view in, the, in this poll. And then you can go to the Q&A part of uh, Slido and you can uh, start typing your views. But at the same time, you can take the floor and start. Uh... George, I just want to yes. raise a question if just to be sure that. Yeah. So you are just sharing the um one web page with Slido. This is what you want to do? Because I see that you are navigating in different windows, but I am not sure if this is just for you or if you, or if you want to share also with us. Uh, this is just a question. No, I was sharing, I wanted to share one screen. I'm sharing okay, more. Okay. No, 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 you, you are just sharing one screen. Okay, one okay. screen. And normally it's, it's, only, it's only one pool. It's only one pool. You are not sharing the results. <laughs> You want to share? The yeah, results? yeah, yeah. I'm not sharing the results. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. I just want to be sure. As you are clicking in different things, I'm not sure if you you are no, aware no, that no. you are only sharing one web page. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've told it's you. Okay, that okay. I, okay. Sorry. I have to juggle with yours. several. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So. I can share, yeah, I believe that we, I can stop and deactivate the poll so that you will have now focus on the space that you can uh, go and write things. And I can share a little bit the views that you had already. Um, give me a minute. So who would like to, to start saying something about these barriers?
it seems that the institutional uh, the institutional uh, barriers uh, are the ones that uh, you like the most. So the floor is yours, okay, it's open to you. And as I said, okay, it is the time that you should speak and not us. And Paula, I would like you to help me, okay, because for a reason I cannot see. Yes. Uh, the participants. Ah, uh, uh, above. If you put your mouse above the um, the red line, you will see the. If you put the mouse, if you cross the mouse above where you are, where you see the information when sharing screen. I do, but I cannot maybe, even see. Maybe it's better if you stop sharing the screen for a little bit just to to reshape your uh, desktop, because I suppose the, um, the chat window, the participants list the window is fully open. So this is why you cannot see it. So only if you do like kind of alt tab, alt tab in your, uh, in your, keyboard you will see it but uh, maybe if you stop ah, yeah, the screen, small, yeah yeah i can stop setting most then you, the you then you initiate again <laughs> then you will so okay yeah, organize the, yes. the, the, your environment yeah so, yeah but you, okay. you can you can start sharing the screen once again but this will no no size. because you everyone went to sleep so everyone is using now so they can see the screen um so who would like to open his camera and his microphone and uh, offer something regarding the... You may raise your hands. I'm sorry, George, you have already a comment on the chat from Ellen Marie. Okay, Ellen Marie, you wrote <laughs> a very big comment. Would you like to just... Uh, Open your microphone and share this thing with us. Yes, sorry about that. <laughs> because you have too many things to say. Okay. So. <laughs> no, it was just I was looking at the list on Slido, and then uh, we actually had a presentation of barriers last year, and I didn't recognize exactly the same ones, so I didn't know what to cross and what to check in the poll. <laughs> so I thought I would just share all of them. So, but the, the most important one was uh, lack of resources, with lack of money, time, people training and expertise to actually do it in the organizations and then lack of incentives as well. So, yeah. Um, the lack of resources, okay, it's a usual thing that we listen to whatever you will try to propose, okay. Uh, and uh, you will try to offer some kind of institutional change anyway. It makes sense, of course, okay, because you know many times we are asking people to do things and they say, okay, what are the resources that I have available? But do you think also that this is also an excuse sometimes? Um, to avoid, you know, to, re to resist to change? Maybe, but I think that a lot of people in these organizations are just so under so much pressure uh, already that there is there is really no extra resources to to do this extra, you know, um, activities on science communication or things that are not seen as, you know, what they really have to do. So, no, I, I think it can be an excuse, but often it's, it's actually the case. Okay. I will share my experience since, you know, people are a little bit shy in the beginning. I remember that when they introduce ethics in the university, uh, coming also from computer science, it's important to say that, okay, because usually we we have projects, okay, that uh, we are not involving people, okay, so there are many of us that they never thought about ethics, to be honest, okay, and that's a big problem also when AI comes now into uh, play, but I remember when they introduced the, the whole thing several years back, yeah, I saw it as an extra thing, right? Uh, we should have someone uh, in the department to coordinate the whole thing. Uh, so it was, you know, uh, something more, as you said, and we are full with teaching, with the research that you are trying to do. So asking something extra, yeah, you have to give the right resources, you are right. 
I'm sorry. Thank you very George. much. George, you have here another question from Raquel Almeida. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's not my view. I've told you that I just went through the literature and I saw that some people were uh, criticizing, you know, RRI as being something that comes from the Western countries in Europe and uh, probably it's not very appropriate uh, regarding uh, the rest of the countries. Uh, and especially if you will go also probably outside Europe, there was a criticism that you won't manage, you know, to pass the idea. But it's not my view. <laughs> and I mean, uh, if I may uh, come in here, it's it's a concept, and uh, and some of the keys and the concept that is very, uh, let's say, classical liberal uh, enlightenment concept. So in this sense, it is it can be viewed by others like uh, very Eurocentric or very Western concept. I mean, uh, probably highlighting issues like ethics, gender, public engagement, and so on is very important, while in other cases may not be so important, I think. So I, yeah. I just want to also to, um, to contribute and to and share my view. Uh, I, 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 so based on the what you have put it in the, in the slide, and also with this uh, Ellen Marie um, contribution with this list of, um, of also um, uh, topics for the for the discussion uh, uh, from the perspective um, of open science and RRI specifically based on my experiences on things related with open access and open data the lack of uh, clear policies uh, and, and clear mandates are, I think are the one of the, the, the barriers uh, because there are studies that um, when we talk about open access publications and open data clearly state that if there are clear policies or mandates um, that the policies and mandates are aligned with the infrastructure and services made available for the community this will make uh, life easier and things that appear as uh, difficult become more easy to do and uh, and then uh, in other in other areas the lack of incentives i think is also quite critical if there is clear incentives uh, of, of course career progression but also sometimes um, a budget <laughs> money for uh, research units that comply with some um, with some um, uh, policies aligned with the RRI components of RRI or open science I think this is also interesting uh, but of course we need to change uh, the incentives that are available within our institutions and not only so also sometimes in the, the national uh, framework of, of, uh, of funding or uh, with our um, funders etc but uh, I, I will put this in the in the top this um, lack of clear clear policy and um, incentives for um, for researchers Pedro I agree with you with the incentives okay and um... I had a recent discussion. People also want also want also to be awarded and recognized. So uh, one of the things that we should have when we are creating, you know, a plan uh, for applying any kind of idea in the institution, we have to remember to award also the ones that they will become champions of these ideas. Uh, Owen, thank you very much for sharing uh, the report from uh, the commission. Would you like to say something? Uh, I don't know if I have that much to say about it, but just looking at the map for those of you who haven't been able to find it in the file. Um, Greece is more or less the only country traditionally considered Eastern, which seems to have like an outsized presence in RRI projects. And otherwise it's very much like you can see Portugal has more involvement in RRI than much bigger Romania. Norway has the same level of involvement as much bigger Poland. So it does look like there's a, it's very Western European dominated, I think. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Rania?
Yes, um, thank you. Uh, I was just trying to clarify a little bit this Eurocentric uh, approach or the idea that it is Eurocentric, um, because I think it's uh, the idea that other parts of the world also have different contexts and that RRI might not be the most fitting uh, sort of concept or, or putting most priorities, uh, the same priorities as other countries um, have. Maybe they have different priorities. Uh, and our context may also be very different. Their societies are organized in different ways. So uh, the stress on public participation may not be fitting according to some, uh, to all countries, for example, because they're organized in different ways. So it was more to clarify the issue of uh, the idea that the concept of RRI is, uh, is a Western concept. Uh, I Yes. If I may say, uh, well, I, I consider this to be absolutely natural. I mean, uh, if you uh, if you want to care about uh, things like RRI, you need to do it uh, from within a let's say prosperous society. Uh, I don't think that uh, people that live in less prosperous societies uh, uh, care about these things because they have other more important things to care about. So uh, I think it's natural that this uh, concept uh, is uh, very popular, let's say, in uh, Western societies. Uh, but this is not uh, a disadvantage in my point of view. Uh, if a society which is not right now uh, considered prosperous, if in the future it becomes prosperous, then I believe that they will start thinking about uh, such concepts as well. But uh, I think it's absolutely necessary that uh, we have this situation, this division between the West and the East, let's say. Thank you, Simon. <clears throat> Lucy, Patricia. I see that you are saying something about the tools and uh, inadequate awareness. Would you like to open your microphone and share? Okay, I hope I'm clear. Uh, yes, what I mentioned is yeah. that uh, what I mentioned is that uh, most of our corporations. Uh, have not yet embraced RRI tools uh, because uh, what needs to be done is probably create awareness and maybe capacity building and then it can now be disseminated in the governance of those institutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, raising awareness. Is clear? Yeah, yes. Raising awareness, awareness is a very... Maria, also you wrote something that some individuals or organizations find it challenging to employ participatory RRI tools also related with the tools. Would you like to say something more? Yes, hello. Uh, well, from the experience of uh, some RRI projects, uh, it has been indicated that uh, some organizations are eager to look for RRI tools and methods, but face uh, challenges on how to apply them. It seems that uh, the, all these uh, sometimes theoretical uh, description or the academic arguments towards RRI confuse, let's say, practitioners. So the lack of the actual participation in RRI activities and only reading about them, I have seen that it creates some mere obstacles, let's say. Thank you, Maria. Fabio, I would love to hear you, uh, but uh, unmute your microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Great. Now, just about the Western uh, uh, nature of the um, concept of RRI, really, I don't know if it, it is a, a Western concept. W what I can say is that in this, uh, along these years, we, we have many examples of uh, how this concept has been uh, in different way uh, adopted, adopted or anyway, a lot of some interest has been expressed by uh, or, organization based in uh, uh, outside Europe. Uh, and some of the, the projects that are represented here, RRI uh, practice and, and other, uh, the monster and other that uh, uh, India, Africa, and uh, the United States uh, um, in, in, this, in these areas. Um, there are many organizations which have uh, followed this concept with interest because I think that uh, uh, what is important uh, of this uh, 
uh, responsible of the responsible research and innovation and uh, uh, is this aim to um, that RRI has to anticipate and assess the potential expectation and the societal implications of, of research and the aim of uh, to foster inclusiveness and uh, sustainability of research. These are um, important uh, needs for research that uh, are still important and uh, that uh, can be um, that are important for the Western societies, but also for the the, the rest of the of the world. Uh, so, okay, Fabio. Since we have you here, I one of the things that uh, most of the people uh, mention is the resistance to change. Have you noticed that in your experience? Is some to change in the in the concept of RRI? In, in, yeah, I believe that we are referring to the concept of RRI, but overall there is a resistance, you know, uh, to change overall for, from people who yeah, so yeah, we were expecting course. something like that. So they saw it as one of the most important barriers somehow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yes, I, I agree on that. Now I, I was just on intervening on the um, possibility for this concept to be considered in the rest of the world outside Europe. For the rest, I think that one of the big barriers of this concept is the fact that it is composed by different, uh, um, the different uh, sub-level or key issues of RRI are uh, uh, different uh, one uh, from each other. So for example, if you, if you see the, and each, each uh, sub-key um, issue of RRI correspond to, in some cases, with to different communities. The communities of gender is different from that of ethics and so on. So uh, probably one of the barriers to the uh, applicability of uh, RRI is also that uh, there are many communities that are behind RRI. Okay. So uh, it's important to find a way to make the concept more, uh, more uh, let's say, more uh, effective, <laughs> I don't know, to use it in a, in a better way. But. Uh, the things that are behind this concept are very alive and very important to be considered. Good. Uh, Andrea, would you like yeah. to say something? Yeah. This is a very good thing that you did, okay? And I, su I suggest to the rest, just open the cameras and when I will see your face, I will understand that you want to say something. Okay. It's way better, okay? <laughs> okay? And easier for me to handle. Okay, yeah, Andrea. Well, I, I would like to say that, first of all, this issue of the Western centricity, it's pretty needed. I mean, it's important even if it wasn't mainly uh, in our main agenda to, to talk about this because, uh, well, I do believe that it's not so Western-based, the, the concept of RRI. We don't have to forget that, for example, the big novelty of the last SWAT call was the concept of frugal innovation that indeed was based on like uh, Indian and generally low-income countries, we have like a, a series of like also books talking about this, mainly by Nadi Radio and Jaydeep Prabhu, that was like named Jugad Innovation, and then the, the next one called Frugal Innovation itself. And it's very interesting because what they mainly argue in a couple of words, of course, is to do more with less. And in this sense, I think that more than Western country, uh, like Eastern country, or <laughs> are less reluctant to change because they experience somehow uh, a bigger need than us to implement responsibility and frugality as a strategy to be competitive. So I think that this is an interesting point of debate, both in terms of considering uh, that probably we are we are forced, we are we are like biased in uh, like reaching every phenomenon with a western lens and on the other hand uh, to to be more reluctant to change than in some other places and probably the contemporary history shows that this reluctancy to change affects a several area like business not only like science or innovation in the western world thank you very much I will agree with you that the Eastern countries, they are more willing to do changes. They want that. I saw it also myself, okay, when we were uh, writing a proposal. Um, Reina? 
Ράνια. Sorry. If I'm pronouncing it. Because I saw that you opened your camera, would you like to say something? Uh, sorry. Sorry, no. No, I, I was actually having a similar point as the previous speaker, so... Um, okay. Yeah, yeah <laughs> uh, and from the things that also Fabio said, okay, I, I, I see... I had a kind of a question myself. Is the reusability somehow possible? For example, how important is the type of the organization, but at the same also time, the context, okay, because I believe that uh, Fabio something like that is, uh, was mentioning something like that, okay. Either the context is scientific or probably regional in which uh, RRI implementation plans have been applied. So we are trying to gather the best practices. Uh, how important do you believe is the type of the organization and the context in which we apply these plans? Who would like to respond to that? Sharing experience. Helen Marie. <laughs> You have a lot of. <laughs> um, well, I can say at least that um, the funding organizations, as was po pointed out earlier today, they have a different context. So they are often very closely connected to the state and um, they're often very limited in what they can do based on outside impulses, like from researchers like us. So they have instructions from their ministry um that limits what they can kind of embrace so uh, while it's a bit true for universities universities have much more autonomy so um, so that is an important uh, uh, difference between those two but i can also comment on the, on the imperialist uh or western focus of ri i don't know i think going back to academia as an institution it's it's global and all universities across the world wants to meet the conventions that are acknowledged for what is a good university or what is good research so that's i think they look to and and those that kind of define these conventions or values are seen as the best examples are in europe or and the us uh, so they look to europe and the us and so I think that they're kind of, they're not necessarily, they don't necessarily feel that it's pushed upon them, but they look to see what's going on and how can we be like, you know, the best universities in the West, because, yeah, that's what they aim to, to be. And that, I think that creates a common ground in the, in the dialogue. And I think maybe that it, it, it was a wake up call for us at the project to see how, how much of the same issues all of the funders and performing organizations were struggling with across the world. You know, we only work with 23 organizations, so it might not be the same for everyone, but, but I think most universities, they, they do relate to this overall idea of what a good university and what good research is. So if we can get our right to be part of that, then, you know, it's going to be seen as kind of a natural thing, not an imperialist thing. That. Yeah, two different points. Thank you very much. Haro, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yes, thank you. Okay. So I, I come back to this point of what is needed to make it to make it successful at organizations, um, whether it's imperialist or not. So I leave that a bit aside. But I really agree with uh, Ellen Marie that it's it should be something seen as normal, and uh, the the risk is that. Uh, RRI is framed as something that is on top of what researchers and organizations and firms have to do. Um, whereas it would be so good if it was framed as something that this is just a way to become successful in what you want to do anyhow. So to make research that uh, makes sense and to, to produce innovations that, that really contribute to society. And um so indeed as so it's i think it, it is something that takes some time to see it to reframe what you are doing at a university and at a firm and in research funding organizations 
Um, so that is not something that is on top, but that is exactly what you are supposed to do and what you are wanting to do. So um, um, I think, yeah, we really should, as a community, try to change that framing. And, and it's not on top, but it's just exactly what you want to do. This is the thing you want to do. Thank you very much, uh, Haro. Rania, you open your camera because you want to say now something. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, yes, I agree very much with Haro that I think that a lot of organizations think it's something on top um, and that, that they already do a lot of the things uh, with different concepts, but we should find a way to sort of integrate them. Uh, but I did want to respond also to Ella Marie because I think, I think she's right in terms of um, uh, that other universities in other parts of the world also look to well, uh, universities in, in America, for example, uh, or in Europe. Um, however, I think that's also something that is challenged by some. Uh, is this the system that we all should participate in? Should we rethink the system? If we look at uh, universities in, I don't know, South America, do they do some things different, uh, differently than, than that other universities do? Uh, and may there be value in that. Uh, and I don't think that's that's going against RRI because it's a way of maybe uh, looking at RRI in a, in a bit of a different way. Um, but I do think there's there's that tendency as well. Uh, so universities, yes, they look to towards the existing system, but there's also some universities that think, okay, but this whole system, how was this built? Um, uh, is there some value in how we do things maybe differently in other contexts, in other parts of the world? And can we make that well, maybe part of our RRI? Um, so it's also a question like, do we all go in Yeah, Do we keep the system as such? Or is it also something that we can question? Yeah, that would be my uh, contribution. Thank you, Rania. Claudia, you wrote a comment on RRI that it is context related. Would you like to take the floor also? Come, yes, I think that or is a context related or is not. I think this was what also the experience is also the different context, not only geographical but also sectorial, for instance. So, but also if you talk about a rye of research, uh, fundamental research or innovation, for instance, you can also have to, to make a lot of work for this as a process of reflection. And I think also it requires also a translation of the stake that are behind the keys, for instance, because for instance, we can talk about this as a label, and this is very risky. What is the stake that, uh, for instance, if you are in an organization are behind that, uh, the key, for instance, uh, research institutions, the key of gender equality also as an organization is very high, but uh, you can risk only to talk in general, no, about gender. And for instance, in other contexts in Brazil, in America, for instance, the reflection about not only gender, but then gender and the intersectionality, also in the context of research, for the excellence of research, or for the, or how to include in the team diversity for improving research is a way for changing, really, organization, but also for changing the practices or making the research more inclusive and also more excellent because also with the COVID, we see how this is very important. So you can have a lot of work to do exactly for the contest. Without the contest, organizational, territorial, geographical, sectorial, and also the application. Uh, this is, this is, is, the, is the point is that it requires a lot of time. So the issue is that it's a process that is not uh, about to make it to workshop or to make some meeting or some consultation. So I think that also the idea to have a long roadmap for the process and to, to go ahead on this is very important. But the, the context is absolutely what is very important. It is the, the big effort, at least in our in my experiences that I found. And when I go also outside Europe, I saw that we have to learn as a European research for instance, from other contexts, for instance, on gender intersectionality and about the public engagement. This is really conceived as a Western concept and some, in some sense uh, uh, is rejected. There are also approaches that are community engaged. They, they use other approaches that can be, but it, the stake behind are the same because all the research, we are all <laughs> in danger in some way if you don't uh, uh, in some way modernize the governance uh, of our research uh, systems 
uh, we don't react to the big challenges and pressure that we have from society and from the changes inside science and technology. Sorry. Well, uh, Claudia, I believe uh, that you made a very strong point. Um, and uh, I see also Eva that uh, uh, said something in the chat that says, there is also the question, who is responsible to train their career researchers? I believe also that you are very right, uh, Eva. Would you like to, to say something about that? Eva? Okay, but Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, we can hear you. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I... Uh... Uh, yeah, uh, I think this, this we discussed at the Eurodoc, European Council of Doctoral Candidates and Junior Researcher, also the how to train the IRICARIS researcher, who is responsible if the institutions or the researcher itself, or in terms of IRICARIS researcher or doctoral candidates, how this uh, RRI and open science uh, training can be incorporating in, uh, let's say, doctoral training programs. So then there were, we have been discussing like quality assurance agency that this should be the, the component because it's really crucial to the, the young generation, it's, uh, it's trained. And then the, there was, I also share something different. This was uh, some study about the perception of plagiarism and generally about ethics. And there are studies that, uh, let's say Eastern Europe is different about like, uh, see the, the concept of ethics like differently. So maybe there is less discussion, generally less, less, less training also in this topic. So this is also which can influence the perception. Mm -hmm. you're, you're so right. Okay, if we want to change the world, we have to change it from the <laughs> youngest generation. So yeah, the, the, the way that we'll educate uh, people, especially regarding research in uh, uh, the university is extremely important. So if you don't have an ethics uh, module, uh, uh, because also I, I'm involved with Territoria myself and uh, we are working the region of Central Macedonia about the gender. Uh, um, and I've heard, you know, many people saying that we should have, you know, some kind of gender studies probably in every discipline, okay. Uh, so it, it's about training the younger generation. So we should have uh, in every uh, kind of tool that we have uh, the right training for these uh, early uh, career researchers. Giovanni, yeah. Uh, if I can add something that uh, I'm now in Czech Republic and I'm working at National uh, library of technology and we are also trying to support the university but I don't see nothing in uh, let's say the strategic documents at national level about RRI so this is, these are strategic documents for the university as well so they don't they don't have some input from uh, from government level let's say to to push this topic forward thank you Giovanni uh, yeah um, I just wanted to point out to what I see as, as a, an important problem, which is the the fact that we, in academia we have a bit this uh, uh, tendency to create fashions all the time, and then to want to change uh, labels to introduce the, the new concept. And when we have ideas that need to be implemented uh, um, outside academia when we need uh, institutional change, which is uh, something that notoriously takes time, is not uh, happening overnight. This can be counterproductive because if people uh, feel that things are just uh, a passing fashion, they will not uh, engage into uh, deep changes in their organization, in their way of doing things. But I think that on the other end, it's also difficult to uh, not having the temptation of wanting to change things because uh, we learn, we, uh, so we, we can come up with better ideas. So how, how do we balance the, the researcher's commitment to, to always do things better, to in, uh, incorporate uh, new knowledge and lessons learned and the temptation therefore to come up with uh, new and better frameworks with the, the need of giving some stability, some uh, uh, impression that things are there to stay and therefore that people can uh, 
commit to work uh, on within a certain framework knowing that it will uh, be a lasting one how can we deal with this paradox of uh, uh, giving stability and and uh, keep uh, uh, improving as we accumulate new learning uh, Giovanni, I don't think that you're expecting me to answer now <laughs> the question. <laughs> it's a very tough thing. Okay. Um, you are right. Um, and I will just say that, yes, it will take a lot of time. Uh, for me, you know, things are happening uh, top down and bottom up. Uh, and it, the, the whole system, it will need a lot of time in order to start adapting the whole concept, uh, I see RRI, to be honest, as a set of values mainly, that are good values in order to have responsible research. And uh, through the training and the younger generations, I believe uh, that uh, we will move to a society that uh, will be able you know, to, to move forward uh, uh, things like that uh, in a more efficient way. Uh, Yeah, okay, Nico, you may open your microphone and... Uh... Yes, I... Uh, it's clear, yeah. ...to say something more than what I'm saying, but uh, in, in the text. Uh, but we are discussing, I mean, uh, we're part of three or four RRI projects right now, and I have seen presentations from another 10 maybe. And there is a lot of discussion about research and uh, a lot of... Uh, discussion about uh, the difficulties of academia to, to adopt the whole framework or not to adopt it and so on, uh, we discuss much less on innovation. And innovation necessarily includes uh, companies, firms, and so on. Uh, perhaps an idea would be to, uh, to try to translate that in their own language, because uh, companies don't have RRI, but they have CSR, they have corporate social responsibility. If you talk to them, they will say, yeah, yeah, what you are saying is what we're doing in corporate social responsibility, or not. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not an expert on that, but perhaps it's an idea to try to translate it in, in, a, in a language that it's more easily understood by, by companies and to, to focus a little bit on innovation as well. That's what I want to say. Yeah. Um, I agree with you, Nikos. Uh, probably the focus in the uh, research part and uh, the focus in the university it has to do the training that we were discussing till now, that it is needed. Uh, but you're right uh, towards the language also. In many, many cases, uh, we saw that uh, it was a barrier. Um, even trying to translate from one language to another. Uh, people had different kinds of understanding when you were translating one term from English, you know, to, uh, to another language. Uh, now, even more with the idea of the context also that we discussed, if you are changing context, probably you have to use the right language in order for people to understand you. Uh, would like, would uh, someone like to add something more on that? No, I don't see. Okay, uh, let me put one last uh, question and uh, in we have something like 10 minutes, okay. Um, what are the key factors favoring RRI in your experience? Because we're discussing all the time barriers. What is something that you saw in your experience, okay, that are key factors that could favor RRI? Haro? Yeah, so to continue on this, this issue of uh, that it should be something normal or something that is already in the uh, strategy of the, of the actors, I think a factor that really helps uh, RRI is whether it's somehow on the agenda already. And I have some experience with, uh, with nanotechnology, for instance, where 
researchers and, and firms thought, well, this might be tricky and how will society respond? Okay, I'm in meetings and I'm in the hospital. Okay, I'm in the hospital. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry. Um, so when it's already on the agenda of, uh, of firms and, and, and research organizations to when they feel, well, yes, there is something with society there and let's, let's find for a way to deal with it. And then RRI may come as a rescue. Um, but when, when you first have to, uh, have to, make, have to convince that, that additional efforts are needed, then it's, then it's diff difficult. So it's important to see what is on the agenda already and, and if you can connect to that. And uh, that, that is, I think, uh, an, a success factor. Thank you, Haro, <laughs> and sorry for that. Um, someone else? Ooh. <laughs> Ellen Marie wrote again a whole paper on the topic. <laughs> uh, Ellen Marie, could you just, uh, you know, what is your favorite from all of the things that you wrote? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Thank you very much. Okay, you. I, I, I also attended your uh, talk in the beginning. Okay, and uh, it was really helpful. So thank you for whatever you are offering. Yeah, I know. It's just uh, if it's if it's useful. It's in it's in the book uh, we just published. So uh, a list, a chapter on drivers and a chapter on barriers. So no, it's it's a. Uh, well, the, the most important ones are, you know, the dedicated programs, infrastructures or units already dealing with this kind of issue. So you're not starting from scratch. And that clear mandates, again, that some of the drivers are simply the opposite of the barriers. So, yeah. And also uh, the culture can be a driver. Academic culture can be a driver for RI. So. I, I agree, okay, but uh changing cultures creating cultures it's a difficult thing on its own and uh, the way to go when you are to, to be honest okay this is my feeling that when you want really to have institutional change you have to change the culture of this institution and as you mentioned in the in the morning you have to work with the people okay thank you for sharing <laughs> all of this uh, anyone else that would like to add something here and probably be in favor of one of the points that uh, Ellen Marie also mentioned? Yeah, Cl Claudia, I would like to hear more about this. Okay, because as I said, I, I'm, I strongly believe in whatever that you have to have a, the right combination of top down and bottom up. I think as an approach as a process of change first of all you cannot create a, a, a process of change without firstly first of all a driver of change initiator of changes that's on which you have to rely and then able with a vision to involve both the many important top down it depends from organizational approach, territorial approach, it depends from the context, as they say, but the top, so institutional actors, non-institutional actors, and also, for instance, uh, looking also to research and innovation also, also in industry uh, organization, also to involve bottom-up actors that usually are neglected in the process also of, uh, of uh, also consultation about the solution, because I think that the stake, as I said, Claudia, we lost you before. I think that you hear me? Sorry? Yeah, we can hear you yeah. now. Yeah. No, sorry. There are a lot of stakes to face because there are a lot of changes in society, in science, in innovation process. So to also this mission approach change the life of everyone. All the organization are under pressure with new changes to face. And this requires, so all I think that the, uh, 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 most of the, 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 the organization and the, the, the actors are uh, experiencing these difficulties to have these fast changes to, to move real, to look at, look at what happened with COVID, you know? how it's possible to manage what is coming so fast. 
So I think that the, we have to, to, to find a way uh, what is the driver, the initiator of the process, but then it's important to have a systemic approach for looking at the top down and bottom up uh, area of actors and making a process, an iterative process, again, the time is an issue, a process in which include this, but not in a, also in this case, not for promoting a label, but try to see together in which way this take can be in some way uh, phased, uh, working together to solution that can be beneficial both for the progressive pro progression excellence of science, for more responsible innovation, sustainable innovation, and also for society. It is the goal of all this effort, I think. It's also the vision that is behind, also for instance, in the case of uh, innovation, territorial coalition, I think the very important effort is uh, how to build together a vision, a common vision that is uh, uh, broader than the institutional vision, because it should be something that is in the middle, on which uh, territorial coalition can work together, also in a longer vision and process. So for me, I think the, the top down and bottom up should be both present for a process of change. Thank you very much. Um, I, we could have one last Okay, that's also very interesting. Well, Pedro, you will be the last one that uh, <laughs> will take the floor before yes. we close the session. <laughs> okay, so um, good morning. Um, good morning. The, the, the thing that, uh, that I wrote, I think it features as something that um, keeps building a little bit on the, the mentality that universities and institutes have. Um, in the sense that uh, I think by making uh, different fields uh, integrating with, uh, within others, it's a way, if you do it in the beginning with students, uh, like for example, if you try to mix the hard science with social science in the very beginning, by just trying to um, uh, be involved in projects or somehow be involved in uh, different courses that aim for that, or hard uh, or even arts uh, courses. If you do that in the beforehand, then when you have um, these people following to universities a little bit later on or institutes, they might be more wide open to uh, gather the, the, you know, to make the bottom up reach the, the top uh, uh, easier. So I would say that this, this could be a strategy I know that some courses are implemented in universities with that uh, idea, but I would say that this is the, maybe one of the drivers that uh, could build this idea. And maybe RRI would stop being just a mere concept and being just uh, an implementation of, of actions that we don't call it by that name, but we have uh, within different uh, few, uh, axes that we talk today, like uh, ethics or um, even uh, science education and public engagement and so on. Yeah. That's... Thank you very much, Pedro. Okay, this is, uh, is 1.44 in Greece, okay, 12.44 in Central European time, and we have to stop uh, this very interesting discussion. Um, I hope that you enjoyed and uh, uh, the whole strand today, that we had very nice presentations. Uh, and I hope that you enjoyed also this session, that you had the, the chance to be more interactive and you to take the floor and uh, offer your uh, views and experiences. Thank you very much for all of the things that you taught me today, okay, in this one hour. <laughs> it was really useful. Uh, we have a third strand of it for RRI tomorrow. So try to join also tomorrow for the final uh, conference on RRI policy and the future of RRI. Thank you very much, everyone. And have a nice day from me. Thank you, George. Thank you.